Hello and welcome back to Hold On Talking Brother. My name is Joe Greenwood and you are listening to our preview of UFC Fight Night Jan versus Divashvili live from Las Vegas in the theater at the Virgin's Hotel, whatever that is. Uh, can't wait to see what that venue looks like. Um, as per usual, I'm joined by my regular co-host Tom Ballam. Tom, a bantamweight main event the lords have blessed us with something so rare and yet so beautiful. Can't wait. We've made it out of the apex, Joe. That shows you <laughs> that we got a we got a proper fight on our hands. Yes. Uh, this is what it feels a bit like the old days, you know. This is a proper fight night card. It's not quite main, you know, like PPV territory. Uh, it's a, it's a few eggs short of a dozen on yes. that front, but it's. Not an Apex card, that's for sure, because we've got Petter Yan returning, mm. and he's facing a big test in Marab Devashvili. Of course, long-time training partner of Aljamain Sterling, a man who holds mm. two wins over, over Yan, no matter what you might say about those wins. Yes. They're on the records, so great fight. Yes, absolutely. A tremendous fight. Um, I, I Let's just go straight into it. Petter Yan versus Marab Devashvili... I'm going to ask the question that's uh, most prominent in my mind of this fight. What does this fight mean for Petter Yan? I think it's huge, Joe. Uh, Now, look. You search the vast space that is the internet. um, On the daily, and there's On the daily, me too. I'm, I'm, I'm on there and I'm looking, I'm consuming, Joe. And I want to consume some Petter Yan, Mm. right? But I can't because nobody's putting anything out there. He's kind of been forgotten a little bit in the bantamweight picture. And that's because he was neutralized by Aljamain Sterling. Um, yeah, mm. the backpack. He he lost the mm. last fight. It was very close. Yes. Um, but he's certainly gone from being this uh, killer out of Siberia. Kind of no ceiling is too high. The bantamweight yeah. division might be locked up for a little while to a guy who's also in the picture, which is an unbelievable turnaround given where he was this time last year. This time last year, if I wanted to see some Petr Jan, Joe, he was everywhere. He was breaking out. Yeah, absolutely. He was in fights that... I mean, me and you declared his fight against Sandhag in the fight of the year for 2021. <laughs> Just an absolute stonking masterpiece of a fight. Adore. Adore that fight. But that's Jan's last win. Uh, he has lost three out of his last four, and I got to say it: if he loses this, he's dropping down to those murky waters where I don't know if a win is waiting for him there. Because it's not like it's like I'll oh, go down and work yourself back up. It's go down and fight for your life down there, pal. Because you know, if you look at Yan's record of when he came up, now it's always easy to do this in retrospect, obviously, but. His wins were, his notable wins, Douglas Silva, D'Andrage, John Dodson, who was tremendous, Jimmy Rivera, who was pretty good, and then Uriah Faber, who was washed, and then he fought Jose Aldo for a vacant title. Um, Faber, Rivera, Dodson, D'Andrage, they wouldn't be cutting it at the top of this division, would they now? Absolutely not. It's funny what a couple of losses can do for your for your wins. <laughs> Exactly. Uh, a lot of revisionism, open, open, kind of the position we were putting Jones in uh, before his spectacular win. I know we're going to talk about that some more, Joe. <laughs> you had some controversial opinions last week. But what we were saying basically is that if he goes and loses that fight to Garn, suddenly you start to look at the fight with, with Reyes and how he looked against uh, Thiago Santos, for example. Even not, the win over Anthony Stella Smith. Wins. Yeah, yeah, it's... And here we are. We're doing the same now with with Jan, and we're talking about his win over over Faber, as you say, over I, I Jimmy Rivera. Was... These guys, these guys wouldn't. They're they're the old. They're the yesteryear. They're the old guard in bantamweight. They've been forgotten. The division has surged so much higher, mm. and uh, yeah, suddenly there are question marks about Petter Jan, which is just crazy considering yeah how will... this esteem we held him in. I will say though that when he fought Faber, he did whoop him. Like that was a that was a proper ass kicking that he gave him, and it's like okay, there was no doubt, you know, he didn't squeak well, past him. And even the well, Jimmy Rivera fight, where for most of those rounds, Jan was kind of like controlling the space, and then he would sort of burst at the end, 
to win each round. I remember we watched it together, like, and you accused me of him, like, doing some, like, weird, like, gamesmanship for that. But it's like, no, he was controlling the tempo and picked his moments. He's a very smart fighter in that regard. He's just not very good on the ground. Like, that... Whoa. whoa I don't think whoa, so, man. Whoa, whoa. I will, uh, I will come back to you on that one, Joe, when we get into breaking down this matchup. But I think it's also important to highlight, before we do that, uh, he also... Now, whooped is a strong word, but he also put the work on Jose Aldo and comprehensively beat Corey Sanhagen. Uh, now, those are two huge wins, and they hold up to the test of time. Absolutely. So, Jan is not really in that position, but <laughs> he could be with a loss to Mirab Devashvili, who, by hook or by crook, <laughs> is on a eight-fight win streak, I believe it is now at Bantamweight, yeah. uh, with his own win over Jose Aldo, retiring the King of Rio in his last outing. Mm. Uh, and, of course, he did get a finish over Marlon Moraes before that. Is he uh, Sterling 2.0? No, no. He's a lot more active than Sterling in terms of, like... Um, I don't know. The thing, thing is with Sterling is just that, like... When he goes for, like, a takedown, he does... He will hold you in that position. And I know that Marab did that against Aldo. I think that's because they're both massively gassed because they were fighting at altitude. But, like, Marab is kind of a lot more active and proactive and will lose positions before then shooting in for another takedown. And I think that is going to be interesting to see how Jan deals with that. Because, as you saw against Sterling, the second fight... Um, he made some not great decisions on the ground, got his back taken, and had no ability to get out of there. How much of that, though, do you put on Yan, and how much do you put on, that on Sterling? That's a different question. But there wasn't any sort of progression to get out of the backpack and the body lock, apart from like holding his position. Really. Well, that's where I wanted to challenge you about him not being so good on the mat. I thought he was very, very active uh, off of... Out of scrambles, you know, I didn't think he was accepting positions at all. He was just a little bit over eager um, and exposed his back, you know, trying to escape from those positions. And that's where Sterling was able to wrap up that backpack position, which is kind of patented for him. And he was able to do it very, very quickly. Mm. Now, of course, uh, Marab will be seeking to do the same. And Jan will hopefully have ironed out that uh, that weakness. But mm. I, I think it's unfair to describe him as being poor off the mat. Going before the Sterling fight, uh, he he had looked very very efficient in in well in all aspects of MMA mm. really. And I I don't know if Aljamain exposed him so much, given that he is a, a specialist in his own right. And um, and yeah, ultimately Jan narrowly lost that last fight to him. Mm. Well, let's Mainly talk about losing those positions. I don't think that makes him bad on the mat, is what I'm trying to say. Okay, well, let's talk about Petian and how he manages fights. Now, if it's a five-round fight, he tends to take the first round, not off per se, but it tends to be more low output, and he tends to build up over time. Whereas Marab, who, this is his first five-round fight, I believe, he is shot out of a cannon, and he stays like that for 15 minutes. Can he do that for 25 minutes? Will Yan allow him that first round to measure that distance? Or is Yan going to up the pace a bit in this fight? Those are the dynamics that we're not entirely sure of right now. But there are some that we can look at and feel confident about, which is we know what Yan's going to do defensively on the feet. Hands by his head the whole way. Hands by his head. Apart from when he's reaching out to sort of measure distance, to keep you away, he'll actually frame off of you and angle off if he's in a position he's not comfortable with particularly from a clinch situation but it's that hands close to the head right so what are your tools to get around that Tom you got hooks to the body hooks around the head and you have to sort of close the distance and if you go in hooks to the body your arms are there you leave a big open gap for that one two counter coming straight down the middle and even a three on the end of that if you feel like putting a cherry on top that is Petr Jan at his best. One, two, with a three on the counter, maybe a jab at the end to close off, frame off, angle off, reset the exchange from there. Classic Petr Jan. And I think Marab Devashvili will oblige him those situations of pressing forward. But it's 
Is he going to then use the hands to open up the takedowns and vice versa? Because if he doesn't do that and just spams takedowns, I could see Yan stalling him along the fence, which may lose him rounds, which may lose him rounds. That is the sort of dynamic that I think is at play. Well, I mean, we had a great blueprint from what uh, Marab's going to try to do from his last fight. Uh, One that stirred up big emotions in in me, certainly. I was very (laughs) upset. Uh, now, just fuming. to under, I'm, I, I am fuming, Joe. I haven't forgotten. Sixteen takedown attempts in that fight for Marab Devashvili. Zero landed. Mm. Won the fight on control time against the cage. Uh, dominant position in the clinch, which Aldo didn't feel like he needed to explode out from, perhaps because he was a bit lethargic, a bit tired, perhaps because he thought he was doing enough. I felt like he did do enough. That's my that's my opinion. Uh, on the damage, I scored that fight for for Aldo. Mm. Now, Jan has got a big warning there. You can't just accept uh, those positions against Marab. Marab doesn't tire. Mm. Over 15 minutes, we know he, he can do that. And it's not enough to just have immaculate takedown offense. It's not enough no. to have strong uh, cause damage on the feet. You cannot accept that position. No. Um, now, I don't think Jan will. And for me, when I looked at his fight with, with Sterling, he wasn't accepting positions. Um, it's just that Sterling was able to get that really advantageous. You know, when you take the back, it's a bit different to control against the cage. Mm. And I don't think I don't think Devash really will be able to take Jan down. What, at all? Or easily? I mean, Jan is a man that has 90% takedown defense. And that's after two fights with Aljamain Sterling. Uh, you know, well, that first one, he didn't get any takedowns, Sterling. Uh, and Jan really beat him up. Well, let's remember how Sterling came out in that fight. Mm. Uh, the first fight now. Yes. He came out trying to put a huge pace on Jan. Yeah. He came out and worked and worked because he wanted to wear on Jan. That's not how that fight played out. No. He gassed pretty quick. Jan was punishing him, beating him up. It was only going one way. And then Jan... Well. Jan, was, Jan was tripping him, taking him down, ripping to the body. Like, he, he knew what Sterling was doing, so it's like, he adjusted mid-fight. I'll work you to the body. He's doing some really nice body jabs um, as well to sort of just eat away at that cardio. I think Jan is very good at sort of adjusting mid-fight. I just... <laughs> I worry that he sometimes falls into this thing of, like, I'm going to control the distance and control the range, which is really what this fight's going to be, because physically they're pretty much the same. So there's going to be no, like, physical advantages one has to overcome. Um, well, yeah, I, we'll t- I think there's a speed and power advantage for, for Jan. And that's before we get to fight IQ and control of the distance. Mm. Um, but I think I think following on from what you're saying there, Joe, is that, yeah, he is comfortable uh, to just kind of let the fight play out. Mm. Now, I listened to Dan Hardy's breakdown of this um, pretty much the only content that's out there <laughs> right now. Uh, this fight's basically not happening, according to the UFC. That's crazy yeah it's well, a great yeah, fight right. by the way i think it's a great fight I it's know really you, interesting for the it's, it's an interesting division. one at least yeah i mean yeah yeah i mean i, I just i really hope yan <laughs> i really hope yan puts a stop to marab uh, i was gonna i was that was my question who do you want to win oh my god i if if marab devashvili beats Peter yan a little bit of my soul dies on that same day my right. you know yeah uh now what I was uh, about to get onto there is what Dan Hardy had to say about this, and I think you were kind of getting at the same thing. Uh, Jan kind of tries to get by on like his presence alone. You know, mm. the fact that he is Petr Jan, he is this counter striker. He does have that fight IQ, and it's a little bit like uh, Aldo thinking he was winning the fight uh, when ultimately the judges scored it to Davashvili. Um, I think there is a bit of a you know like um, yeah, well as you say. Jan gives up often the first round. Um, so he's, yeah, he's going to have to be very wary of that going into this one against Mirab because Mirab, Mir- by default, Mirab wins the fight. By default. Jan really? has to stop that. Yeah, Jan has to stop that from happening. Mm. That's interesting. That's really, really interesting. W- would you like me to explain why I feel that way? A Go little on. bit further. Well, it's, it is that just 
non-stop cardio pressure wrestling approach. Yeah. You know, you're taking dominant positions in the cage, you're on the front foot, and ultimately if you're controlling people in the clinch and you're working for takedowns, that's also a bit of a defense from the striking. And um, yeah, it comes back to wrestling being the dominant discipline with M- MMA. Yeah. That's that's true. That's true. And it's just I d- I know that Divash really's on this run of eight wins, and he had the Marais fight where he was dropped and was rocked badly. Uh, you know, I think if this happened, oh. if that happens in this fight, I don't think Jan's going to make the same mistake as Marais did, um, where he then re- received a hundred strikes without any coming back the other way, uh, going back the other way, I should say. Um, I. <sighs> I struggle to think that Jan is going to allow himself to get stuck up against the cage for 25 minutes. Um, I I just really am hesitant to give a round away to Divashvili. Really. You know what I mean? And he will most likely give away that first round. I just think if he could just up the pace just a little bit at the end of that round, then he could probably, you know, assert more control over the fight. Uh, hence, go on, Tom. Well, I just wanted to pick up on on one more thing. I mean, we've just kind of brushed past what it was that Sterling was able to master, which did actually win him that second fight against Jan. Yeah. And will Devashvili be able to do the same thing? I don't know if he's got the physical ability to, because Sterling has such long legs and arms that like has has a huge advantage over a lot of bantamweights. It's a big bantamweight. Yeah. It's a heavy bantamweight. That's a, a muscular bantamweight. That's a big dude. That's a big, big dude. He's a featherweight, really. Um, and I think there's a lot riding on this for Sterling in his next fight up against Cejudo. Um, but yes, anyway, going back to this fight, we'll talk about Cejudo Sterling in a moment, but let's talk about this. And I'm just going to put my prediction out there for you, Tom. I, I've got to go with... My heart and my gut and my head, Petty Yan by decision. Uh, given the form you were on last weekend, Joe, it was all ready for you to say Marab Devashvili and just <laughs> <laughs> send my blood pressure through the roof. Uh, yes, please, please, Petty Yan, uh, put, this, put this away, get back on track, and uh, uphold the beauty that is the Bantamweight division. Uh, mm. We cannot have a, a procession, a handover from Sterling to Devashvili. No. Um, that would upset me greatly. And as you say, just for Jan, where he would be after a loss here, it's... it's well... <laughs> doesn't bear thinking I, about. I mean, could he be on the verge of getting cut? <laughs> I, he, I, think that's, I think that's a really possible outcome. I think he would be so upset, you know, with the judging, with the way he's been treated, with the lack of promotion after... You know, we haven't talked about the loss to Sean O'Malley, um, but that's mm. a huge, huge blow to his status. He's clearly not getting the respect that he feels that he deserves, either from the judges or from his promoter, the UFC. Yeah. He probably feels there's an anti kind of Russian anti. Uh, Do you blame kind of... him? No. 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 I, 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 it's understandable why he might feel that way, and ultimately we might lose him from the UFC. Um. Yeah, I, I really hope he wins. Now, if he does win, Joe, still more work to do if he wants to work his way back into the title picture for me. Uh, he's still a couple wins away. And if he loses this, he's three, four wins away. I mean, it could be quite fun, actually, in a way, if he does lose. Of like, you got to face Yanez, you got to face Ricky Simone, you got to face Saeed Namagomedov, you've got to face... Joe, we... On, hold on, I'm talking, brother. We've got a signed and sealed uh, rule here that we both agreed to last year. Let me put it to you right now. You lose three fights in a row, you get cut from the rankings. Mm. Can you imagine? Petter Yan, adrift, fighting the likes of Jack Shaw, just sat... <laughs> just, yeah. Oh, Jack Shaw's got his fight booked for London, uh, which is at Featherweight. So he has officially moved up now. So he's <laughs> one less issue for Yan to deal with. Do you think we should amend that rule to not include title fights? Perhaps, yeah, perhaps. Because it does seem crazy to think that Petr Jan would be outside the rankings with a, with so, a loss here. Lost to O'Malley, lost to Divashvili, but if a loss to someone else, no get out of those yeah. rankings. No, I'm fine with that rule. I'm absolutely fine by that rule. Yeah. Um, well, in, in that scenario, Joe, he's lost five fights <laughs> in a row. And uh, definitely, I mean, that would be just unbelievable. The man is so good. Now, Joe, Marab, a win here. Is he up for the belt next? Well, that depends on... Sterling, because we've talked about this before, he's facing Cejudo. 
Um, and Sterling's in this weird spot now of like, you've got Cejudo. Let's say he gets through Cejudo. Do you then try and challenge that's Volkanovski? A, that's, a, that's a big if. That's a big uh, if. Yeah. Hold on. Let's just say if. Let's say if he gets through Cejudo. Do you then go up and face Volk? Okay. Does Volk accept that? Then, if you don't, if Volk doesn't accept that, do you stay for Sean O'Malley? If you beat Sean O'Malley, then do you go up? If you lose either of those fights, do you then just move up? Because the issue for Sterling is it's all about timing. Because he could end up losing this belt and moving up to featherweight and not going into a title shot and not getting a top contender and having to take the RDA route up to the welterweight title, which is a tough, brutal road. The <laughs> RDA almost pulled off. He pulled it. He almost pulled it off. He almost pulled it off. Yeah. Does could Sterling do that at uh, featherweight? I'm going to say if he faces Ilya Taporia, I don't think so. Yeah, those would be, that'd be a hard road. I don't expect that to play out. Um, but yeah, you you spelled out the situation for him. But what about for Marab? If he goes and puts away, let's say big oh, performance sorry, yeah. of a Jan here. Uh, no, because it's so dependent on Sterling. Like well, we know that they that they won't fight. I mean, what a sad state of affairs if we have uh, Cejudo winning or losing and then retiring, which I think we probably both expect to happen either way. Um, oh, really? You think he's one and done? I think there's an air of GSP coming back to fight Bisping. Uh, for I me, think yes. I think if Cejudo wins, he's fa- he's setting up that O'Malley fight. That's okay. money, man. That's so much money on the table. Yeah. Come on, man. He can't turn that down. Well, I, I, I hope so, because I was just th- lamenting the prospect of a potential uh, kind of belt, interim champ belt for Sean O'Malley versus Marab, you know, in the absence yeah. of a proper... That would be poor, sad. Poor Marlon Vera. That's all I can say is poor Marlon Vera. Right, let's yeah. talk about the rest of this card. Um, go on, Tom. Well, so, well, it was the bantamweights we wanted to look at, Joe. Yes, uh, exactly. We've got a few more matchups on this card. Not quite in the title fight arena, but uh, mm. not too far away. Yes, Saeed Nurmagomedov is back. Um, he is back after uh, defeating uh, Saeed Yakub uh, Kakramanov. Kakramanov said, uh, I bet I'm going to get cut. Yeah, I remember I'm going to get cut after putting a very good performance, and he got cut, which is ludicrous. Uh, defeated by Ninja Choke. Very rare. He faces Jonathan Martinez. Jonathan Martinez, four fight win streak, including wins over Vince Morales and then Cub Swanson. He is a training partner of Chris Gutierrez. And both of these two have hellacious low kicks to the point where they've both got TKO wins via leg kick. Now, if Martinez is a smart man, and I hope he is, he will be hacking at Nurmagomedov's legs because that is a great way of slowing him down. Don't you think, Tom? I do, but I just want to get it on record. This is the kicking Nurmagomedov we're dealing with here, Joe. They're both kicking (laughs) Nurmagomedovs. But this is the real one. He hurts people. Uh, I think he would quite welcome a kind of uh, kickboxing match at range, Mm. given that last time out against uh, your man Saeed Yakub Kakramanov, he was fending off uh, relentless, relentless wrestling and looking a bit the worse for it before... Locking up a ninja choke in the second round, which was hellacious. It was mm. fantastic. Uh, go and watch it if you haven't seen it. But it was kind of a bit of a Hail Mary pulling it out of the bag. Wasn't enjoying all that wrestling stuff, despite no. being a Nomaga made of. Um, and that's what makes this fight an exciting fight. Yeah, man. We're going to have we're gonna have two guys putting the work on each other on the feet, I think. And, of course, we'll have some exchanges. Uh, in the clinch. It should be a full uh, mixed martial arts matchup. Can't wait. Can't wait. I'm leaning to Nurmagomedov in who I want to win. So I want to see I want to see how far this guy can go. Like he's got some nice wins, got some nice finishes as well, but like let's see what he's up against like against these top dudes like I don't know. Yeah, so Said Nurmagomedov, big fan of him. Well, he's seven fights into his UFC career now, Joe. Just lost the one against Raoni Barcelos mm. uh, back when we thought he was a world <laughs> beater. And he is in this category of bantamweights just lurking lurking out there without a number next to the, their name mm. in the shark tank. Exactly, exactly. Now, I'm, let's, I'm, let's, I'm picking him as well, by the way. Let's talk about a couple of veterans on this. 40-year-old Rafael Sunso faces 37-year-old Davy Grant. I love it. I absolutely love it. This is going to be an absolute 
drag out brawl, slobber knocker from these two. Um, Grant is an absolute dog. Watch his last few fights. Tremendous fights against Marlon Vera and Adrian Yanez. He both he lost both of those. But Martin Day finished with a left hook, which was sick. Beat Jonathan Martinez. Tremendous. And then ground and pound Lewis Smolker in his last fight. I don't know if you remember that one, but it was a bit of an odd one for Grant where he seemed to have, like, he won the first round quite clearly and Smolker came back and it was like, oh, God, Grant might be done here. Three losses in a row. And then Grant came out and absolutely smashed him into the ground. Grant, absolute dog of a fighter. Love him. This is going to be... that They'll oblige each other, I think, in the uh, nicest way possible. Yeah, as I say, he can't help but get into into these into these wars. The vet that he is, yes. Uh, yeah, fun fight. Both guys with with name value. Obviously, as Sal, I'd say he's had the the brighter career. He saw the greater heights. There was a <laughs> moment when he was on an enormous run at bantamweight, but this is the even older bantamweight. We don't even remember that bantamweight anymore. Um, mm. But yeah, should be a good fight on the prelims there. Absolutely love that. Uh, let's talk about the rest of this main card if we have yeah, to. We've got to do it. We've got to do it. <sighs> Alexander Volkov. It's staring you in, yeah, staring you in the face right there. You've got two ranked opponents. Number At 18 and number 13. At heavyweight. But they are heavyweights, yeah. Volkov I would happily... Facing I would happ- Alexander Romanov. I would happily never talk about heavyweight again. After that John Jones yeah, win, I'd I, happily I had to, talk about I, it. I had to coax you into it. I had to prod you a bit and remind you that this was taking place. Uh, Joe, it's number 8 versus number 13. This is the guy's the best in the world. At heavyweight, <laughs> I'm sorry, man. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not into this. I don't care. Volkov is never going to be more than what he is now. And Romanov lost to Tybura because they were both gassed brutally at uh, altitude. Um, don't know. Don't care. Whatever. No, sorry, Joe. I don't care. I don't care. Romanov before that uh, failure against Tybura, yes. he had locked up. Uh, what was it? Three submissions and and a knockout in his in his brief UFC career. Yeah, good for him. No interest for you there? No, I don't. I actually really don't care. I really, really don't care. Heavyweight is so bad. It's so bad. What's going to happen is this: Volkov's going to come out. He's going to do that little kick to the body, and he's going to do his little, you know, little kicks to the body. Throw a one-two step away, kick to the body, one-two step away, and Romanov's just going to like try and spam him into clinches. Get a trip from there and sub him from there, which is what I think will happen. I think he's gonna. I think he's gonna sub Volkov. Why not? I, I expect Volkov to win the fight by by decision. Uh, in the way kicking that he to does. the body. Yeah, just man- managing the range. Uh, kind of sapping on that gas tank. <laughs> Guess what? We have to talk about Nikita Krylov versus Ryan Span again. Psych. No, we don't. Uh, Ryan Span. Uh, listen to our preview from a couple weeks ago. Yeah, we already were forced to put out a very low energy. Uh, <laughs> preview of that matchup I mean are your feelings on light heavyweight as cold as they are at heavyweight I would get rid of light heavyweight and just merge them all into heavyweight yeah right wow yeah. so uh, wait wait. there's a 200 pound plus limit at like anybody above that and you're all you're, you're all in the, oh my lord bro just stick if they bulk up an extra 5 pounds like you, then you'd have heavyweights at like light heavyweights that would be like 230 bro Rakic man Rakic he so could, you're talking he about heavyweight. Anthony Smith versus Francis Ngannou Hey man, you reap what you sow. Yeah. <laughs> Anthony Smith said, Anthony Smith is angling to get on power slap. You deserve what you get, mate. You deserve oh, what Lord. you get. Yeah, he's just oh, like, shit. oh no, it's really good. Yeah, no, no, whatever. It's just like, oh mate, how, how hard up for money are you? Bisping yeah, he... isn't commentating on this card. He's commentating on the power slap pay per view finale. Oh dear. He's not commentating that, that on the card that's got Davy Grant on it, and he loves Davy Grant. I can't, I just, I just, it's dreadful. Com- company men died in the wool. Uh, I love Bisping, but man, that's that's not good. That's not good. Um, Nikita, yeah, Ryan Span, whatever. I'll go with him. Um, I think less than a round this fight. Does this go a full be. round? <laughs> Does this go a full round into a second? It may or may not go a full round. I got to be honest, yeah, yeah, it's not it's not warm in my loins either. Okay. Can you talk but to me? I, I will say, I will say, like it belongs on the main card. You know, it's it's it, it's like to have this on a fight night. As, yeah, yeah. As yeah. as the headline bout is is tragic, but in the picture, in the mix up, yeah, I'm 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 all right with it. I mean, Span goes out there, gets a big knockout, Joe. 
Mm. I think his stock is is pretty high mm. and uh, something we we're going to have to get more excited about. We can't just dismiss him. Superman span, he's been he's been hurting people. Fair enough. Can you talk to me about Ricardo Ramos versus Austin Lingo? Well, I can tell you that uh, Austin Lingo doesn't even have a page on Sherdog. Oh, wow! Not even Wikipedia? <laughs> no Wikipedia, no Sherdog. But what I did find some information about him. Now, he fought in the UFC, Joe. Yeah. Uh, Yusuf Salam? He... There you go. There you go. Lost I thought you'd be the man Salam. to turn to for Austin Lingo, Ricardo Ramos. This is the kind of fight that should not be on the main card of a fight night. This reeks of LFL. LFA, I should say, not LFL. LOL for saying that, but uh, LFA. Oh, can I just mention this? This is absolutely not related at all. Did you notice on the commentary on the last pay-per-view, like, the continued shitting on James Krause's gym? (laughs) Did you notice that? Like, oh, and sadly, they had to find a new gym after the shuttering of... uh, that twat, Jane Krause's uh, gym. Have you noticed that? Oh, we had nothing to do with... Get rid of that video of him giving betting advice on our on our YouTube channel, please. <laughs> do you notice? Uh, no, I didn't pick up on that, no. Very funny. Is, is there a way to connect this? Is Did one of them train there? No. Uh, yeah. It just popped into I, my head. I think that draws a conclusion to our <laughs> preview of this fight night. Hey, hold on, hold on, hold on. You've still got... Vitor Petrino, this is uh, Anton Turkalj. Turkalj, he fought uh, Almeida and got smoked. Do you remember him? No, Joe. Yeah, he got rear naked choked. Of course he did. Uh, right. Let's, uh, what else do you want to talk about? UFC 285 again. So is there anything else you want to mention? Well, Joe, I, I want to give you an opportunity to kind of, you know, come to terms with, um, with what happened. John yeah. Jones is back. He is now... The pound mm-hmm. for pound goat. It's official. He, you can see it on the UFC the page. Man. He's not he's got up nine number ranks. One best fighter in the world. He's not fought for three years, and he beats a rubbish heavyweight. And he's the pound for pound best fighter in the world, ahead of Volkanovski, Makachev, Leon Edwards, Kamaru Usman. Now, he has, he has, I'd like you to no- go back to our preview episode where you'll hear the same man who sat across from me on the other side of the uh, webcam here. Extolling the virtues of Cyril Garn because the, I thought the greatest, he might the have new, improved. the new version of heavyweight. The, so did you, <laughs> the new so era. Did you. Me, yeah, and I'm and I'm not walking that back, Joe. I'm not walking that back. Uh, oh, I'm walking it back. You, you, you compared. You made this thing about like, oh, it's like GSP versus uh, Bisping. No one thought Bisping would win this fight. Blah blah blah. Maybe not, but at least we knew that Bisping was a well-rounded mixed martial artist who could, you know, actually deal with takedowns and actually, you know, work off of his back and defend submissions, whereas Garn sat down and was just like, oh, he's choking me for some reason. Oh, I don't like this. Let me get out of here. He is trash, and I want him out of the UFC, and I want heavyweight shuttered, and just put make light heavyweight 215, yeah? And then it's like, if you can't cut down to that, tough shit. Don't like heavyweight anymore. I hate it. I love Curtis Blades. I love Tom Aspinall. Just have them fight each other once a year for the title. Boom. Well, you know what happened last time? The two of those folks fought. No. It wasn't. It wasn't exactly an exhibition for heavyweight with the early injury. No. Uh, yeah, I've given you a chance to to kind of double you know, down, double down. To quote, going Lumi, down with the ship. Don't Captain's back down, down, double down. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you, you, you were Tory, Joe. Uh, now what? look, <laughs> look, look. I uh, haven't changed my opinion either. I think John Jones is. Stock has never really been higher. It's it's pretty crazy. The great yeah, cleansing waters. When he beat Cormier the, in the second fight, that's the highest his stock has ever been. No, I'm talking about like the appreciation for him right now. Oh, it's is, grim. Uh, I hate it. It's it's pretty crazy how rehabilitated one can become taking a few years out. You know, it's yeah, that whole, beating up uh, his wife a year ago, less than a year ago, getting drunk absolutely. in Vegas, headbutting a police car. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, John Jones, mate, you're the greatest of all. Th- I hate it, man. I hate it. I hate it. And people go, oh, he's rattled. <laughs> no, man, I hate it. I like, I just hate it. I hate that people go, like, there's no discussion to be had. So then why are you bringing it up, then, if there's no discussion to be had? There is clearly a discussion to be had. Joe. I stand by GSP as the greatest of all time. Joe. Yeah. John Jones left the sport as the, uh, the best at light heavyweight. He had the belt. He returned and took a belt in another division. Yeah. By definition, that makes you the pound for pound best. So then GSP did the same thing then? No, no, I'm talking about with the current rankings. He steps in ahead of Volkanovski off the no. back of holding. No, being he the doesn't. lineal champ in two divisions. 
Two weight classes, pound for pound. Uh, he's definitely not ahead of Makachev. Wait, sorry. Now you're challenging Volkanovski's spot ahead of Makachev. Those two. Those are the two. One and two. Jones should be number three or four behind Leon, most likely. So Leon number three. I don't agree with that. <laughs> I, I just don't agree with that. You are you are wrong. Don't back down, double down. Yeah, that's what I'm telling you. Right. Let's. I, I just want to get rid of heavyweight man. I, I don't. I don't want to see a fight night main event again with heavyweights, unless it's Spivak. Yeah, and then that's it. Right. Can we talk about um, the lack I mean, of? Go on, Joe. Sorry, just you mentioned Spivak. Uh, yes, now we do have to talk. We do. We do have to talk about the heavyweight title pitcher. All right. <sighs> Go on. Well, we do. I mean, Volkov here goes and gets a big win over Romanov. Eight takes out number 14. <laughs> <laughs> if I ever see Alexander Volkov in a heavyweight title fight, I, 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 can't, even, I can't even come up with anything that I'd rather do than watch that. You know what I mean? I mean, uh, yeah. I'd rather... It does... It does... Go on. Go on. I'd rather drink piss. You know what I mean? Like, I'd rather do that. Anyway, keep, continue. Well, it does bring about this discussion. Uh, I mean, uh, it was said uh, by Jones that Garn was the least well-rounded heavyweight in the top five. Yeah. And, of course, some eagle-eyed viewers amongst us have, have gone and looked at that top five. And yeah. notice tied to Imasa is also... <laughs> To be found in the elite, uh, Stipe, he, he's he's got to be washed, and he's got to be he's got to be yeah. past it. He's forty. Uh, Guard, you've 41. already dismissed him, so we're just left with Blades and Pavlovich. Is that uh, Aspinall's not in the top five? Is he? What is he number six? No, to to Avassa ahead of him. So is he is number six though, Aspinall? He is number six, but the spear oh, is hot on his heels at number seven. Now, oh, Joe, crazy. I'm setting it up. John Jones versus Sergey Spivak. What odds did you put on that fight taking place? <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. Um, I'm trying to think of things that are more likely to happen. Uh, the British public embracing Meghan Markle. Um, you know, uh, you getting a PhD in Chinese history. Um, like uh, I, just... I took the first steps this morning, Joe. I told you about that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know, man. Like, I just... I... I'd love to see it. Like that. Well, I that... mean, I, I tell you what. Like, if he does put away Stipe in that fashion, then uh, Pavlovich and Blades are otherwise disposed of. We're going to have to find somebody for Jones to fight. He's going to have to, you know, if he is going to continue at heavyweight, he's going to call and... out. He's going to call out the light heavyweight champion, whoever that is at the time, which will be Alex Pereira. But anyway, and. And, you, and you've got no interest in that? Well, of course I'd have a massive amount of interest. Well, no, actually, no, I don't. Jones would take him down and sub him. I'm like, what am I talking about? I have no interest in it. Like, Pereja is so flawed as a fighter, but the one thing he does well is so good. Like, so, yeah. I, and by the way, I rewatched that title fight from Saturday. Jones looks terrible. Like, he looked terrible on the feet. He looks slow and plodding. That's heavyweight. And I hate it. Anyway, let's move on. UFC 286 is next weekend in London, headlined by Leon Edwards versus Kamara Usman. But you may not know that because the UFC has not promoted it. What is wrong with them? That was the biggest moment of last year. That was the biggest, most incredible moment of last year. One of the greatest calls of all time. I, sw- I remember watching it. My jaw was on the floor. I was crying. I get emotional talking about it. And they've done no promotion for this. The UFC hate Leon Edwards. They want Usman to have that title so they can do Hamzat versus Usman. I wonder if Hamzat... Uh, sorry, I wonder if Kamaru wants that fight. Um, what, Hamzat? That, yeah, yeah. Do you think Kamaru might just retire? I I really strongly think that's a high likelihood. We, he's hinted many times about hanging it up. You know, when the time comes, he doesn't want to be falling off and still going out there. He Is still he revives. Re- his knees are shot. Is he going to retire in London? Yeah, that's the only thing that makes that makes me doubt it. Mm. Um, that's a weird one to do, isn't it? Do you do you want to take a fight against Hamza in in Vegas and that be what you're pinning your hopes of retiring on? I'd make a lot of money. He'd make a lot of money off of it. Like, would he just be like, you know, what? I could go out on this. I could go out on this. Maybe even two fights against not him. not Colby. 
Usman five. Ugh. Fuck Colby. <laughs> I don't want to see that. Or does he take the easy fight and take Bilal? Oh god, that'd be dull, dull fight to end it all on. Um, yeah, interesting. They're kind of looking past. Leon here. Now, we will be releasing our official picks next week. You've piqued my interest, Joe, because last time you were talking about uh, it'll be a very different Kamaru Usman here in London after that knockout loss. I'm not going to ask you to go into your deep cauldron of of knowledge and pick out the recipe, pick out the spell, which you will uh, bewitch us with in your Mm. prediction next week. But um, what else are you excited about on that card? I mean, Gaethje versus Fazeev. I mean, my lord, my giddy aunt. Can you believe that we're getting that Gaethje versus Fazeev? No, no, credit. I mean, I don't want to give credit to Fazeev for fighting the kind of fights he should be fighting. I mean, to Gaethje for taking the kind of opponents that need to be allowed into the picture at lightweight. But Mm. you kind of have to credit him because it has been a closed, you know, like an old boys club there in uh, in the lightweight. Division. There's there's two fights I'm going to shout out to you. Jack Shaw versus Maquan Americani at 145. That's a classic. Welcome to featherweight, mate. Uh, fight of Maquan Americani. Um, and you know I'm expecting Jack Shaw to to do the business on the on the Americani there. God, I hope so. I mean, he will. He will. Like, you don't think he's he's not? By the way, have you looked at Americani's picture on Tapology? <laughs> I haven't. I'm going to send it to you right now, just so you can uh, have a look. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm interested in that one, um, and uh, yeah, I'd say Shaw. I'd pick Shaw for that one, not to spoil it too much. Uh, Tom, you've just seen the picture. What do you What do you see when you click on Macron Americani, Mister Finland? I see Mister Finland. That's it. <laughs> I see Mister Finland. Big pimpin, blonde ladies. It's yeah. It's good to be. Um, is he? Was he Syrian? No, he's Kurdish. Kurdish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's, 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 he's made it. Good for Good him. For him. Uh, no, the other fight I want to shout out, our boy, Jai Herbert's back against Ludovic Klein, the black country banger black himself. black country banger. Bro, I can't wait for that fight. That's going to own. So, uh, yeah, looking forward to that. Klein, Klein dangerous opponent. Uh, yes. Somebody's going to get hurt. Yeah, man. Somebody's going to uh, get hurt. Now, I, I hope Her- Herbert doesn't fall on the wrestling that he did last time. Uh, you know, I hope he actually swangs and bangs, brother. Yeah, we want to see those. Th- we want to see those knees as well. Um, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, the other big fights, of course, an important fight at middleweight. Roman did lead say, "Is he for real?" We're going to find out because he's going to take on the Tory. Mm. Uh, big test. Big, Mohamed Makayev. Big, big test. Mohamed Makayev's back against I- Jafal Fiorio. Yeah, it seems like he's again condemned to the early prelims. Your man's nine and zero now. He wants to be the youngest champ. Uh, mm. Well, he needs to get onto the at least the prelims by now. Mm. Uh, can't tell you anything about Jaff Al Filio, but please tune in next week where Joe will give us the life story <laughs> of that young man. Absolutely. Um, and Can- then, of course, we have to we have to mention Gunnar Nelson. Yes, uh, he's fighting Brian Barberena. That sounds like that sounds like fun. Can I also point you out... You love this... Brian Marbrainer, don't you, Joe? Uh, he's all right. Um, he's all right. Apparently, Ian, Gary, and Barbarina had agreed to fight each other, but the UFC were like, nah. Well, it's just like, why don't just give Barbarina and Gary that fight? That just sounds ideal. Now, the fight that I've actually... It's just... Should I talk about it now? But, like, the Veronica Macedo Hardy is back against Juliana Minna. I'm really confused at why she's back, because she retired due to brain injuries and was worried about the damage that she was taking um and she's not four in three years um you know and she wasn't on the best of runs in the ufc anyway four that no, one and four four and one one and four in the ufc um she's coming back and facing juliana Sorry. miller this is so you feels put, weird you put me, you're putting me on a downer <laughs> this is this Gate you perceive, mate. Gate you perceive. Yeah. Forget it. Tell all. me Forget more it. about that. Oh yeah, brother. Well, we'll get into that deep next week, along with Edwards versus Usman three, Marvin Vittori versus Roman Delize as well, and Gunnar Nelson versus Brian Barberena. There's a women's fight on there as well that we're not bothered about, but whatever. Um, let's. Uh, Tom, is there anything else you wanted to talk about? Oh yes, UFC two eighty eight, Newark, New Jersey. They're back there for the first time in a while since Covington versus Lawler. 
Um, Aljamain Sterling, again, not allowed to fight in New York. So he's fighting in New Jersey against Henry Cejudo for the Bantamweight title. Co-main event, Charles Oliveira versus Benil Dariush. That's and official. also, Cron Gracie versus Charles Dordain. Cron is back, brother. Can't wait. Quite simply, the best jiu-jitsu grappler in the UFC. Like, there's there's no doubt about that. Um, yeah, would smoke anyone on the mats. And uh, excited to see if he's actually developed some stand-up skill. Too bad he just wants to bang, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> too bad he wants to get into absolute slobber knocker wars with Cub Swanson and yeah. lose. Shocking. Shocking. But yeah, I'd, I mean, I'd, I hope someone's had a word with him. Yeah. I hope he had some sense kind of slapped into him by Cub and we'll get a proper performance. Because, you know, I think he had the tools to beat Cub Swanson in that fight. It was yeah. tremendously frustrating. And, uh, and yeah, no wonder that he's been missing. I didn't expect to see him back. Yeah, I'm, I'm really surprised by it. Actually, I'm really, really surprised. But yeah, let's go, Benil Dariush. Let's Absolutely. go, baby. Wow, you're crapping on Charles like this. Our boy. Bright, uh, the world spins fast. I'm <laughs> holding on talking, brother. John Jones is rubbish. Benil Dariush all the way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Listeners, you can join us next week for our preview of UFC 286. You can contact us at holdonbrother69 at gmail.com. Send us your predictions. For that card. What do you think is going to happen in that main event? And like, subscribe. Leave a comment if you wish. And generally, have a good old time. Tom, thank you so much for joining me. Thanks, Joe. And listeners, thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you later. Bye-bye. <laughs>